Why? That's great. That's great. Are we done? No. You're very close, though. You do have the inverse function that's right here. You just got to make sure you call that an inverse. So can you tell me if, we have, if I want to change my y to something that says an inverse, what am I going to change it to? G inverse. Wait, now, is this appropriate? No, because the function is not an So be careful. You're not always putting f inverse, right? Because if we don't have a function f, well, that doesn't make any sense. This would be like, well, go look for your function f. And you're like, uh, what function f? If, you, if that's not on the board, what function f, right? So it doesn't stand for that one anymore. We're trying to say this one. If you had a letter g there, we want to say that the inverse is now not f inverse, it's g inverse. You, do you follow that? So you've got to watch the letter that you're using. And we just rewrite this part, x minus 3 over 2. Well, we're done. That's our inverse. And in fact, you could check it, right? You could plug in a number. If you plug in a number like, oh, I don't know, 1. You plug in 1 here, you're going to get 5, right? If you plug in 5 here, what should it give you out? If you plug in 1 here, it's going to give you out 5. I can't do that because I'm holding pens. Uh, but if you plug in 5 here, what should it give you out? If you plug in, what do you plug in? 1. What should this give you out? 1. It should give you out 1. Plug in 1 here, it gives you out? Take the 5, plug it in here. What's it give you out? 1. It has to work that way. If 1 gives you 5, 5 must give you back 1. You with me on that? Yeah. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. <coughs> very similar. Very, very similar. Go ahead and solve that one. Find me the inverse. You know what's nice about, about, nice about inverses? They, they go kind of quick once you get the hang of it. Some of it's just basic algebra put into practice for us, really. Okay, so number one with this, this h of x. If we have h of x equals 5x plus 2, the first thing we better do is replace that with the y so we can work with it. So y equals 5x plus 2. Did you get that far? Good deal. Next thing we'd do is we, we would change our x and our y. We'd switch those things because we're now switching switch our variables so that we're finding our inverse. That's what the inverse is all about. So we have x equals 5y plus 2. Honestly, raise your hand if you made it that far. Okay, that's the idea of finding an inverse. If you have that down, you have the idea of finding an inverse down. The rest of it's basic algebra, so you can solve for it. So now we would subtract 2, because we're trying to get y by itself here. x minus 2 equals 5y. Of course, we're going to divide by 5. We get x minus 2 over 5 equals y. But we're not going to leave it. We know that this part right here, that is the inverse. That's undoing what that function's doing. That's what, what's happening here. That's why we're, we're doing this thing. We just got to call that the inverse. So in our case here, we're not going to have f of x or g of x. We're going to have h inverse of x. So h, that little negative 1 is pronounced inverse of x. That's x minus 2 over 5. Did you check it with a point? Did you try it? Try it right now in your head. Pick a point 1 through 5, something easy. Pick any point that you want, plug it in here, and see what you get. Any point that you want. So everyone has a different point right now. Okay. Now, whatever you got out of that, so I pick 1 because 1 is easy. Uh, I'm going to get 7. I'm going to get 7 out of that function. Now, I'm going to take that 7 and plug it in here. I do 7 minus 2, that's 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and that's what I specifically plugged in. Does that make sense? If you pick 4, you would have a little different 
numbers, but it would give you back out four right here. So far so good? Okay. Now, could you still do it on this one? I want you to notice that when we do switch our, our variables here, you still need to know how to do it. If we get x equals y minus 2 over 3, can you still solve that for y? You okay on getting that far, by the way? How are you going to solve that for y? So don't forget that you can do that. If you multiply by 3 here, we get 3x equals y minus 2. Of course, just add 2 on both sides. You get 3x plus 2 equals y, and that would be your inverse. Now, I do want to talk about graphically what these things look like. If I have a, a function, any function, I'm going to make one up right now. Firstly, can you determine that this thing is a function? Function would be vertical line test. Does it pass the vertical line test? Yep. Okay. Is it a one-to-one -one function? One-to-one yeah. yeah. -one would also pass the horizontal line test saying I don't have any non-unique outputs. Says everything's unique. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Yeah. That says this is one-to-one. -one. If it's one-to-one, -one, it will have an inverse. Here's what an inverse does. I want you to think carefully. Okay? You ready? ready for this? Are you ready for this? You, you guys awake? It's kind of cool. What we've been doing the whole time to find inverses is simply switching our x with our y. You follow? So if we switch our x with our y everywhere around here, take, take a random point, for instance. That's the point maybe 1, 3. You follow? That's 1, 3. If I switch that, that would give me 3, 1. That would be about here. True? If this is, uh, let's see, negative 5, 2, negative 5, 2, it would give me 2, negative 5. Negative 5, 2, it should give me 2, negative 5. It's right down there. What this does, if you imagine this line, that diagonal line, what an inverse does, it flips a function across that diagonal line. That's all it's doing. It's flipping your x and your y, right? So x's become y's and y's become x's. So it's taking this thing and saying, oh, now you are that thing. Well, I tried to draw that as good as I can. It's kind of hard. I'm not an artist. But if, if this is f, that's f inverse. It says you take your function, and it's, it's, it's flipping it across that diagonal line. That diagonal line, by the way, is the y equals x line. The y equals x line. It's a simple diagonal line. But by flipping your x and your y coordinates, it's taking all of your y's and making them x's, and all of your x's and making them y's. It's flipping those two things. Yeah. So it's just makes the parallel? No, they're not, they're not parallel. They're reflections of each other. They're reflections. It's saying it's a mirror image across that line. Now, I know it doesn't look like a mirror image. It's whatever, but it uh, gains some weight across the line. That's OK. Uh, but this, is, this should be a mirror image of that, that function. By switching your x and y, that's exactly what happens. You guys understand graphically what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So is why the, uh, the reason why you cannot have a non-one-to-one -one function, because if you have a non-one-to-one -one function, when you reflect it, it's not even a function the horizontal line test would become the vertical line test for inverses. And they, these have to pass both. Otherwise, you can't find an inverse. Now, one last thing. <clears throat> Here's a way you can check to see if two functions are actually inverses. One kind of important note. Do you remember those compositions we did in the last section, 12.1, where you put one function inside the other function? Mm -hmm. A composition of inverses must give you out x. That's going to be kind of weird. Like, wait, x? I thought it was supposed to be like 0 or 1. It should be nothing. Well, what are you plugging into a function? You're plugging in x, right? The composition should give you out x. We'll, we'll see that in a second. The composition of a function and its inverse.
must equal x. So for, for instance, you familiar with that? The f, with that little open circle? f of, if I have this right here, f of if inverse, which means I'm composing f inverse inside of f, that thing has got to be equal to x. Same thing if I do it in reverse. This is the only time in mathematics where you compose two different functions and they equal x. They equal what you, you, you're actually plugging back in. Or they equal the same thing in reverse. Do you remember all those times where we did f of g and we did g of f and they were completely different? Do you remember that? This is the only time where you can reverse the operation of the, that composition and it gives you the same thing. It's the only time that that happens is if you have an inverse. Let me give you one quick example on how this works. I'll show it to you. And we'll be done. So let's say that I tell you f of x equals 2x minus 5 and f inverse of x equals x plus 5 over 2. And I say, hey, trust me, those things are inverses. Are you going to trust me? Well, yeah, probably because I'm a math teacher and because I'm an honest guy, generally. Generally. Yeah, white lies are just, no, I'm an honest guy. But you would probably trust me, but what would happen if I made a mistake? You've seen me make mistakes in this class, right? <laughs> this doesn't happen often. But, uh, no, I'm just kidding. But it does happen occasionally. What if I made a mistake? Is there a way you could check my work? Is there a way you can check your work to make sure you actually found the inverse without doing it over again? Because you don't want to just repeat the same mistake over and over, right? Because that won't show you whether you're making a mistake or not. There is a way. Here's the deal. I'll show you this twice. I'll show you each composition. I'll show you they're exactly the same. You only have to show me one of these. So it's, it's your choice whether you want to show me f of f inverse or f inverse of x. Both of these will come out to the same thing. Now, can you tell me, just by looking over here, what do these ultimately have to equal to prove that those are inverses? they got to equal x. Why? Think about it. Look at the board right now. Stop, with your, stop working for a second. What are you plugging in here? It's saying you're plugging in x, right? It's got to go through the function and the inverse. It's going to give you whatever you started with. It's going to give you out that x. That's why you don't get a 1, because you're not plugging in 1. You're taking whatever value I'm saying. That's x. So this thing will ultimately give you out X. Now we're going to go through the, the function uh, composition really quickly because we covered it last time. If you're talking about f of f inverse, hopefully you remember this, we write this first as f of f inverse of x. Do you remember that? Then it says, okay, you, you leave this f, you guys should be pros at this right now. You leave this f alone, but inside you're going to write f inverse. Still so far so good? So if f inverse you now write, well, f inverse. What's the only letter left on the board that represents a function? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. It says you're going to write f. You're going to go up to, what's f say? 2x. So 2x minus, 2x, 